I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is July 18th, 2020. And in this video, I'm going to be running Cat6 Ethernet from my crawl space to my backyard, all underground, so that I can, so that I can have a couple of Ethernet outlets in my backyard near my fence for future cameras or even for Wi-Fi. Now this summer, we were working on our backyard. We had a house built last year, and as part of that, we got our own dirt backyard to do all our own landscaping. So as part of this, I want to install two outlets in the backyard, one on each side of my fence the left and the right. And in those, I wanted power uh, so I can plug in Christmas lights and such. And I also wanted Ethernet so I can put in cameras near my fence. Uh, and I know there are wireless cameras out there, but for many reasons, I just prefer to have them wired in. So first, before I go into this too much, a few things. One, I did a video on putting power back there, which I already did. And it's posted out there. Here it is. And I'll put links in the show notes. If you're interested in running power underground uh, to an outlet in your backyard, you can go watch that video. Um, now, Let's talk about the cable I bought. So what I have got here is I got Cat6. So I went on Amazon and found this deal and I got Cat6. Um, that's a direct burial cable, 1,000 feet, which is far more than I need. Um, and it's also gel field, gel field. So it's, it's um, ready to be, it's actually can be buried with anything with just by itself. But I am actually going to put it into um, some PVC conduit. But technically it can just be buried as is. So if you, um, but if you don't know about what much of what you want, uh, one, if you're going to bury something, you want direct burial cable. And then two, if you're doing ethernet, um, in this day and age, it's 2020. I would suggest, just cat suggest cat six or six a six a starts to get a little more expensive and there's not much more bang for your buck. And if you don't know what you want, um, I did do a video here quite some time ago, I guess, 2018, going over the differences between cat five, cat six, six a and seven. And the big difference here is like, if you're doing this at this point, don't get Cat5. There's really no reason. It's a lot cheaper, but there's really no reason. Uh, but for Cat6, um, what you can do is you can do 10,000 megabits, which is a lot more, if, you know, they talk about gigabit internet right now. And now you can get gigabit internet in some places or even a little bit faster. And Cat6 can actually do 10 gigabits. But also that requires you have special equipment. So it's, it's kind of, if you're getting Cat6, you're future proofing yourself pretty well. And Cat6 can do that speed up to 37 meters. And for most of us putting this in your house, it's not a problem. But also, it can do 1,000, 1 gigabit for 100 meters, which is really long. So unless you have some really specific situation, Cat6 is fine. If Cat6a is cheap enough, I would just I would have gotten Cat6a, but it was a little bit more than what I wanted to pay right now. But that can change a year from now. So, Or at some point, Cat7. But right now, Cat7, a bit above my pay grade right now. So anyway... But if you want to do some research, research what you want, get direct burial, and get at least Cat6, in my opinion, in 2020. If it's 2025, you probably want Cat7. Okay, uh, anyway, you can go review that video if you're interested. Now, what I want to do before I go over what I'm doing to do all this is all the stuff I bought. So I'll put all this in my show notes, but let me go through uh, really quickly. So if you're doing Cat6 and you're not familiar with doing Cat6, you've never put it in yourself, you're going to want a tester. And this will actually test the line. You'll see me do this later on in my video, how to test the line with this specific tester that I bought. Um, some other cool tools. Oh, I should probably move that over a little bit. Some other things I love. I got these scissor snaps that are really good for cutting big, thick cables. I love them a lot. Uh, you probably want something like this, which is going to help you strip uh, Cat5 or Cat6 cables. And I use it a lot in this video. Uh, also, uh, I am cutting some PVC pipe, and I love this thing. So in the backyard, we're doing sprinklers and different things. This pipe cutter is awesome. I love it a lot. Let's see. Also, here's a punch down tool, which you use for uh, attaching your Ethernet to the outlet. And you'll see that in the video here. Uh, and then I'll now go on to most of the parts. So here's this uh, two port gang uh, that's weatherproof because I have power going on one, Ethernet going on the other. Uh, and then I have this cover for, the, for it. And then I also finally found these so I can actually put this in there with my Ethernet and actually have the box close it on. And you'll see that in this video. Ah, then you need some Cat6 uh, jacks. And so here's a here's a box I bought of 10 that I bought quite a while ago. I just have them laying around to use. And then I'm going to use some heads because I'm going to put heads on the other end so that I can test them. Then I've got, uh, in this case, I think about 10, uh, 10 foot, 3 quarter inch PVC pipes that I'm using, maybe 11. Then I have a couple of 90 degree bends, a couple of 45 degree bends. Uh, I got these galvanized tube straps to hold on. I also have this electric box where I, at the end, where before I put it in my house, I actually have two pipes going in, but I want to go into one so that I can consolidate as it goes out. So I've gotten that guy. 
and a gangplank, a cover. And then let's see, uh, solvent. So at the end of the day, when I'm done with all this, I will glue all the um, conduit together. And then I did have to, I'm not gonna go into great detail, but I did have to drill into my house and I had to drill a lot. Some of you may have a much easier to go of this, but a one and one eighth inch drill works really well for that three quarter inch pipe. And for me, I bought this whole kit. Now what I'm spending, not counting some of the, dr the drill bits here, and I'll put my, you know, some of this in, the, I'll pop some of this up. Everything that I'm spending for the most part for this is about 520 bucks, but that gives me a lot of extra things that I don't need. I've got, don't need if I want to go pare down, like, you know, I got a thousand feet of cable. I don't need a thousand feet of cable. A thousand feet of cable is more than enough to do two ports on my two ends. So if you only need to do one, you don't need a thousand foot of cable, but it's also trying to hard, hard to find 500 feet. So, but you, maybe you can, uh, but some of the other stuff, you know, there's a total 520, about 150 of that is in tools. So, um, anyway, it's an expensive thing, but I think I'm gonna like it in the end. Now with that, let's get to it. Okay, first I kind of want to show this direct burial cable. I got a couple pieces here I cut earlier. So this is Cat 6, and it can be directly buried. So it's got some thick rudder shell, and so it can handle water and things like that. But also it's got a gel in here. So I'm gonna take this apart real quick. Hold it still. Oh. Hey. Oh, okay. So I get a good shot there. So I'll just cut, this tool is really fun. great. You can sit here, spin it, pop that off, and there it comes off. I just like this tool a lot. And now compared to what I'm used to, this has a clear sheathing around the whole thing. And then also, maybe, I don't know how well it'll show up in the video, it's got this gel in here. Stop moving it. And it is gooey. Okay, yeah, see? And if you're not familiar with Cat 6, Cat 6 has this centerpiece. That's not unusual. This centerpiece helps separate uh, the wires, so it helps, you know, get a better, better signal. But they're all gooey now. So, now that's good because I guess the idea is if something should pierce it underground, I guess the idea, best I understand, is this gel will kind of help, help prevent the water from coming in and doing further damage. Um, but, anyway... There it is, but when I get to this and start doing this, I think a good idea is probably to clean this gel off. When you cut the ends and attach it, probably clean as much gel off as you can, because this gel, I believe, is supposed to be non-conductive, so um, that might affect your connections. I'm not certain about that, but just cover your bases, clean it off really well. So if you're gonna do this, get direct burial. Now, even though I could just simply direct bury this, put this right in the ground, I am gonna run it through conduit, and that way, if I ever need to replace it, I could. It's overkill, I know. But it gives me a chance to, if something goes bad, I could replace it 10 years from now. I could pull it out and replace it. But also for me, it gives me that extra, extra, extra protection because I don't want to replace it for 20 years. I don't want it to just last. So there's that. Now next step. Okay, so kind of going over drilling my hole in the wall. I've already done it, so I'll go into a little bit of detail to it. So what I did is I came over here and used this long drill bit to drill into my wall because there's an inner and an outer wall. And so I wanted the inner and the outer wall, I wanted to make sure that they lined up so I could fit that tube through later. And then I used this one and an eighth inch drill here, which I have worn down to the nubs. And I drilled from one side, and then I went to my crawl space and drilled from the other spot side. And that way, because I used this, they lined up and I was able to get my, get my pipe through later. So I got my pipe through, I got this coming out. And down here, you can see this is my, it's got my two here that goes to one. Now this one is already connected and working. That's on the far right side of my backyard. And that ethernet is working, but I want to do another run. And you could, uh, and so that's an individual run going to a different box. So I need that. But also at this point, you probably don't want to run a long run with more than two ethernet cords in here because it would be really hard to pull. But you can do four, I think, through a little distance. That's why I have it coming here because I don't want to drill a second hole because of pain in the butt. So I got the one hole, I'm going here, and all four will eventually go through here when I'm done. And so it all worked pretty well. But drilling that hole in that grout was a pain in the butt. You know, here's the screwdriver I used, but I mean the, the drill I used, but it was a pain, but I did get it. So now on the next step. Okay, here's the fun part. Actually, it is kind of fun. So we have all this conduit 
I put in here. So I've cut all this conduit, put all this three quarter inch conduit here that eventually gets up here. And this is all, all the way routed on the other side. But we want to pull our cable through and we can pull it through the whole way. And so what, one way to do it that's really kind of fun is you get, it's actually kind of interesting that it just works. You get a lightweight string like this. Um, and then you tie, you don't, my son did this earlier without tying anything to it. But it might be a good idea to tie a little bit of tissue paper to it. To it. This is like just a tissue I tied. And then what you do is you go on the other end, you get a vacuum, and you don't need a powerful vacuum. You just suck from one end, and you pull this string, and someone lets it all the way out, and eventually this string ends up pulled all the way through. Once it's pulled all the way through, and you still have some on your end, then you tie a bigger rope to it. Now, in my case, this is more enough rope strength for what I'm doing, but you need a stronger rope than just this. And then you, by hand, pull this through, and then you get this rope on the other side, and it's also on both sides. And then now on the other side, I can tie it, I can tie and attach my cable to it, and then from here I can pull it all the way through. And it works great, so it depends on how much of a length run you're doing. Like this, we have, you know, beyond what we're doing here is another, I don't know, 40, 50 feet, and that one worked just fine. So you can go, for us amateurs who don't do this every day, you know, 100, 150 feet, 50 feet doesn't seem that bad, uh, depending on how much the cable size and the size of your tubing. Uh, but with that also, you also, in, go look this up, rule of 360, and when it comes to doing pulling conduit, you can see here I've got a bend, 90 degrees. You can see I've got a bend there, 45 degrees. When you go back to your route, you want to add up no, no more than 360 degrees of bend. And yeah, going backward doesn't count, that actually adds. So the idea is, you can pull cable over more but it gets more difficult and more difficult. So really the idea is once you get to 360, you can put a junction box in. And so you could pull everything out there and then route it back in and again. So you can need like a, an intermission part where you have a break, you can pull it through, push it through. But this, I have exactly, I got 90, 180. Uh, I, I, I have exactly 360 here, so I'd work out pretty well. So with that, I'm gonna go on the other end and we're going to suck this guy through. Okay, so I took off this last little end pipe because I can add that back on real easily. But now I got the vacuum going, or I should. So I just gotta feed this through. And it will start it'll start sucking it up. Bit by bit. And it should come out on the other end. Oh, and there you go. He's got it all the way on the other end. So now, from my end... Okay, now we've got this tied to this. Pretty simply. And then now we'll just have my son pull from the other end, and hopefully we'll get this going, so... And now I'm saving my string, so my son, he's wrapping it all back up again. But, if you don't care about it, you can just pull it out real quickly and... Got it? Okay, now there we go. We got it all at the end. So now we'll pull it through a few more feet and then what we're gonna do is come back to this end and we'll get the cable ready and we'll pull it through. Okay, so I'm gonna prep these cables as best I can. So what I have done is I have my thousand foot cable reel over here and I pulled out uh, enough length in this one to be what I need and I have an empty lot next to me so I just stretched it all the way out. I think the ideal thing would be is if you had two rolls and then jerry-rig something so that it can be pulled and then just get them together and start pulling. That's probably the ideal, but I don't, don't want to buy two rolls and have 2,000 feet. So there's probably many ways to do this. These are pretty smooth. So I just tied a loop on this and I want to, and also what I've seen is when you're pulling, if you're pulling more than one thing, offset them a little bit. That way this one gets through and that one gets through. And so what I'm going to do is kind of wrap this a little bit, which is not going to do a whole lot for me, except for I'm going to tape the sucker down a lot. Call that good. And then I just have a lot of electrician's tape. And I'm going to start going back and forth on this. I'm sure there's some better techniques out there, but I don't do this every day. So I will do the best I can. And also this is not that heavy compared to some other things.
Okay, there we go. So next thing, make sure that oh, it's holding. Well. We'll see. Hopefully that holds well. The other option I did with the other one is I did another way. If this doesn't hold well enough, I did cut into one, expose all the wires, and I used the wires and wrapped around the rope and tied knots that way. That's another good way to do it. So this, I think, will be good enough for my needs. So next we'll pull it. Okay, so I'm going to start feeding this in while my son pulls it. Okay, keep pulling. We'll see how well this does. Keep pulling. Okay, and then we'll slowly feed this in as he pulls from the other end. It's as easy as that. So now I'll go swap them, swap them spaces. No, I'll, I'll roll the string. My wife is asking if I want to roll the string at the same time. I told her no. I was at the time, but the small string got tangled up. This bigger string doesn't get quite so tangled up. Now the other good news to doing it this way is once I bury all this and attach it all up, if I got a problem, I can pull it through again. That's the nice thing about doing it in this fashion. Oh, I see some tape. There we go. Okay, I'll pull a few more feet out here because it's easy enough to cut. There we go. Sweet. Okay, so let me get this part going. So now, in my other video I did, I put power in here, and the power right now is technically a glorified extension cord and it's not plugged in. But whatever you're fiddling with, make sure you have no power going on you don't want to hurt yourself. Now with these, I also don't want to go too long, because whatever I do, i got to shove back up in here. So I'm going to cut, the first thing I'm going to do is take these mega scissors here and cut this short. Probably about there we'll do, well, about there. I could always pull a little more cord if I need to, right? And then you take this little guy, which is really nice, go down a bit, give it a couple spins, it should cut the outer wire, and then we get this exposed. And then we're going to cut some of this stuff loose, and we're all nice and gooey. And I forgot my paper towel. I should have brought a paper towel back here. And then I'm going to cut the center part loose because I don't need that anymore. And now we're kind of gooey, but I'm going to use the inside of my shirt. <laughs> That's all I got right now, just to kind of remove some of this goo. Ugh, icky. Make sure I remember paper towel. Okay, now if you are unfamiliar with these, you got them color coded. Brown, green, orange, and blue. And right next to each one is its counterpart. So if I pull apart this brown, there you see it's brown, and there's a brown white. It's got a brown stripe. So green has a green white with a stripe, orange, orange white with a stripe. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this up. <clears throat> and if you look at here, let's see if I can show, if you look closely on the top, there's an A. And on the bottom there's a B. We want to do B. No one really ever does A. I tried to look up if there's any really advantages to one or the other. Not really. But everyone does B. So do B. Now you'll see on the bottom for B it says, you see that's orange? So an orange one's going to go in here. You see that orange white? Orange white's going to go in here. Green and then green white. Now if you flip it over on the bottom, blue white blue, brown, white, brown. So all I have to do, I usually work, if you screw this up, you just cut some more cable. I usually try to work from the front, so I have brown and brown, white. So I'll take that one apart here first. 
I'm not the best at this, but I get the job done. The other side is orange, so I'll get that guy over here a little bit. Okay. And then what we do, we got that brown, take it like that, and you kind of stick it in there. Which is not enough yet, but at least you get them placed. And you see brown white. So you can see that? Brown and brown white. And here we've got orange and orange white. We'll stick them in. And you can see orange and orange white. And then this tool is awesome. There are some cheaper things you can do. Oh, see how it just pops out? But this tool, you need a, something to push against with this. But what you do is this has a blade. So the longer side is kind of a blade that will cut it. So you need to push it in, and as you push it in, this will actually cut the wire so it makes a connection, and this will snip off the end. So here I can go, and I think I'm going to so push it in, snip. And now we're connected. And I gotta redo that one. Just be careful of your fingers because it can hurt if you happen to cut them. Okay, so let me get the other two here. Sometimes I gotta do it twice to make sure to cut it. But see, those are nice and in. Now I gotta do the other ones, green. And green white. The other side we got blue and blue white. Okay, I don't want to hold in there too well. So they should all match up. See, green, white, green, green, white, green, white, green, orange, white, orange. So you just do a double check, make sure it all lines up. And this does have little caps here to kind of hold on a little better. But then we should be done with this, aside from putting the faceplate on. So I'm going to attach the other one. I'm not going to put the faceplate on yet because I want to put the heads on the other end and test it to make sure the cord is good before I commit myself any further. Okay, now I'm gonna get, shove this into my house. So I gotta get this guy uh, back on like that. We'll start to slowly route things through. Right up through there. And now the fun part is when I have all four of them come together here. Because now I need to have these guys, all four, going into my house. This should be a little bit of a challenge. It's getting a little stuck, so it's gotten through the wall. I need to get someone to pull on the other side, because once I get it far enough, it actually starts hitting a beam in there. So I have to have someone to pull on the other side, but then I'll get this all pulled through, put down. And the next phase is go in there and put heads on the other side so I can test it out to make sure it's working. Okay, so now I need to put heads on these. I already put head on one head on the other one and it worked just fine. So this, uh, and I did forget one tool that you'll need is this crimper. So I'll probably go put a link to that somewhere. And you'll, I've had this forever, I have to go look that one up. So what I got to do here, take this guy, cut it like I did before. Get the outer tube off. Peel back that guy. And again, I got all this goo, which I need to clean off. Oh, 
I'll separate these. And there's a center part that I don't need. So I just cut that off, making sure not to cut any other wires. And then we gotta take this apart. These are my ancient notes I have. Okay, you gotta wire these differently if you do A or B. We did B. So to do orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. That's my ancient stuff. So what I do, there's probably a few different techniques out there. I don't know. I, this is what I do. And I've been doing this for years, but I don't do this profession, but I've done, I don't know, 100 or so of these. Maybe a couple hundred. So I unwrap it all. And we have to start with our orange white at the end. So what I usually do is I'll take a couple like this. And these are messy, so let me clean them off as I go. And I'll get them close, because what we're going to have to do is we have to stick them inside of here, and they're going to be really close to each other to do that. And lined up pretty well. So what I do is I kind of pull it and I kind of bend it back and forth and work it to try to get it as straight as I can. And I don't really worry too much about the end because I am going to cut it. So you can see how it's a lot straighter than what it was. And then I go, let's get the next one. We got uh, green, white. Or, well, let me back this up. Sometimes I do this. I do this and get them all where they should be first. I kind of jump my gun there. So you have green, white. And then here's where we do a little weird, because now we do the blues. So blue, blue, white, green. And at the very end, we got brown, white, and brown. So the colors alternate, and the only weird thing is, is the green one here. So you have orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. Let me attempt to get some of this, more of this goo off. Make sure they're all in line. And then like I said, I take a couple, straighten them out, then I add another one to it. And I try to bend and tweak it to get it straighter than what it was. And I keep adding one at a time. Pull and flex. Oop, I got the brown there. Oops, messed up. Need brown and white, not brown. There we go. Between pulling and finagling, I get uh, get it pretty straight. Of course, the end's all whacked out, but I'm going to cut that anyway. And then what I have is my head here, and so you got the tip there. Well, that's going to go on the back side. So that's on upside down, like that, and that's how we're going to put it in. And it will guide it in, but if I try to do it like right now, no go, because the, they're all different lengths, and it's kind of scraggly at the end. So I want the best to get it right about there. So I'll come in here, and I'll cut it straight. Cut it really, really straight. And you look at that, make sure it looks good. It's nice and straight. And then we take this, and slowly shove it in. And hopefully, if they're all lined up right, they'll kind of go in their own channels. And you kind of shove it as far as you can to the end. And you should see on the side, that brown one should be kind of at the end there. And on the other side. And that's a good idea at this point. My eyes are getting worse as I get older. But you can eyeball it and do a double check to make sure, you know, you have orange, white, orange, etc., etc., according to the way it should be. Once you get it all shoved in there, then you take this guy. And you see it's got this little pressing mechanism here that will press against it. So you put it in there, like that, and then you push it down, 
you got to have a little bit of grip strength to do this. Press it so much that it actually will release at the end. And boom, now it's on. So in theory, we should be good. And next thing we're going to do is test to make sure it's good. Okay, now for testers. So there's this guy. And he's kind of cool for network testing. So what, this is not going to test speed or anything. It's just to make sure that all the wires are connected from end to end. So what you got to do is you go to network. And then you take this guy and you plug it into the correct jack. And now it's plugged in there. You push this test button. And what it's going to do is that light goes through every single wire, all eight. So it puts a little bit of power through the first wire, second wire, third wire, and so on, so that you can connect this on the other end, and you'll see they match up. So I can do that as a test right now. I can hook it in here, and we should see that they blink together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that'll tell us if everything's working. Now at times, I have connected these up, and I've had one, two, three, skip one, <laughs> and that tells you there's a problem. So I had that happen with my last setup, and actually I didn't put my heads on right, so I had to go cut my head off and try another one. In fact, I had to do it three times in that case, which was a little bit extreme, but eventually I got it working. Or there are times when he goes one, two, five, four, which means you reversed, you flipped two of them or something. So you're going to make sure that not, not only that all of them go on, but they all go on in that right order. Otherwise, you might have flipped something. So I'm going to leave this on. Oh, another cool thing before we go outside to do the other part of the test is this has a scan feature. If you put this on scan, and you take this guy, you can hit the scan button right here. See, it makes that noise. And it gets noisier right there. So if I go anywhere else, if I go on another wire, this is how you can trace wires. So I can say, okay, where is this? Nothing. Louder. So you have a bunch of wires. Now we don't need to do that for this test. But sometimes if you have 800 wires, it's nice to trace the route. So now, click. make sure to click test. I forgot to do that one time. and I went outside to test and it went bonkers for 10 minutes before I realized I didn't push the button. So, we're testing, we're plugged in, now let's go outside and see if it's working on the other end. And hopefully it's okay, but actually if it's, a, if it's not, that's always fun to show too. So, oh, there we go. So now, let's see how the light goes. So it's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sweet! We got it on the first try. The last one didn't like me very much, I had to go through a bunch of heads. Now if you have an error, if, if, if things are reversed, like a four and a five are out of sequence, you wired it up wrong. Go go cut the head and do it again, or also make sure you cut did this one correctly. Okay, now I want to get this on and lined up just right. And We have four screws for this, but also luckily I found this guy, which lines up pretty well with hooking back into there like that. So what I'm going to do is hook these in. So these, I usually want these to be on the bottom, the little tip. And see, it's got a little hook in here, and so you should. I always forget which way is which on this, but let's try this again. Okay, hook on the bottom, there we go. Then hook on the top. See, now we're nice and flush. And we flush there too. And this guy, I'll do the same thing, make sure they align correctly. Boom, there we go. Now comes the fun part, because I gotta, you gotta shove some of these back in here a little bit without doing any damage so be very careful and mindful of that you can always shove back a little bit too okay and then try to get that lined up i think we're okay now and this is just takes a while to get these all in because this actually goes through here and goes through here at the same time into back in here so it just takes a while do one at a, I'm doing just one at a time and it's just it's time consuming to do it correctly but then we should have a nice uh, 
water resistance seal there, right, without any special stuff, and we should, in theory, be good out here if it rains, or it gets hit by a sprinkler. There we go, not super pretty, but it works. But also you can see I had a nice, the foam is kind of sealing here, so I should be good. Now there's a few more steps I'm gonna do for testing purposes. I'm gonna bring my laptops out here and make sure my network is working quickly. I'm gonna hook it into my network, make sure it's good. And also bring out my, a POE device that will draw power and make sure it can draw power just fine before I call that part good on testing. But I'm not gonna film that right now. But then beyond that, I got a few more steps to complete to mechanically get this all together, so I'll show that. Okay, I got my blank cover here that I want to put on this guy to kind of cover it up. And hopefully it has some screws and whatnot in it. And it does, good. Chances are I'll never have to get in here again, but I could if I wanted to. Okay, there we go. We're good on that. Now, next thing I got to do is do some gluing of these pipes, which I could have done first, but I didn't want to just in case. But now I need to get these pipes cemented together. Okay, so I got my little gray cement, I guess. And I guess it's a little different than doing... I was recently doing sprinklers where I had to do two different materials. One was like a primer thing and the other one was a glue or a cement. This one, I guess, we just have the one. And it's all nice and gray. But all you got to do is here... If I knew what I was doing, it would be better just to glue it all up to begin with and then pull it. But as is, what I'm doing, I'm taking it apart just a little bit, and you can see my cables are in there. And then I'm applying this glue around. Well, I guess not a glue, a cement. And then, shoving it in. Twist it a little bit if I can. And then make sure it's not going to pop back out and kind of hold it for a few seconds. This one doesn't seem to move much, and then I think I'm good. So I've already done a few of them, but I'm going to go do every single one like that in here. And then I'll be good, and it'll be underground, no water will get in, and also it won't come apart. And so if I ever have to pull it again, I can pull it again. So on to the last step. Okay, last step, I got this all connected. Now I am leaving this one a little loose, so I could take this apart, but I have done that. So the last thing I need to do is get some caulk here. Might be a little ugly, but at least I can seal it up. And then, don't have to worry about water getting in here from the outside into my crawl space. I'll make it a little bit ugly. Okay, I think I'm done. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.